the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My intention today was to talk to you about the lion and the flea, but uh, I realized that maybe there's a better topic to address, that will be the lion and the COVID. Um, in light of the Gospel lesson today, what the devil can do to us, either as the lion or the COVID, or slash flea if you wish, and to remind us of the great principle that to survive the attacks, would this be from the lion or from the COVID slash flea, we ought to be the church, a community who tries, who struggles intentionally to be at the feet of the Lord, closed and in the right mind. And that outside of these three attributes of the community, it's all delusion and madness. In the Gospel lesson today, we hear about an extraordinary episode. I think if we were to see this, we'll be chilled to the bones. Did you ever see a naked person in public? I did. We drove years ago with Presbyterian, you might remember, in San Francisco. I will stop with this name, the, the holy name of the city, of, of the saint, Francisco. And lo and behold, with a kid in the car, we had to distract him because casually, a naked man, totally naked, crossed the street in, our, in front of our car. But this one that the Gospel tells us today was not only naked. He was in the tombs, living there, fiercely screaming, she was seized at times, was kept on the guard and bound with chains and fetters, which he broke. He had so much power that the demons gave him that he broke the chains. And then um, by the demons he was led in, he was led in the desert. <clears throat> and the extraordinary encounter here is with the Lord Jesus Christ, who comes now as the Son of God, the Lamb, to face the lion. The lion is the one who wants to tear us apart, who wants to devour us, devour us, as he did with this man here. And as the Lord approached him, we heard this demonic, demon-possessed man in Gadara with a loud voice screaming, What have you to do with me, Jesus? Why are you here? Leave me alone. Get out of here. This was the reaction. I beseech you, do not torment me. This demoniac now, full of the demons as we hear, as he was asked what his name is, legion, signifying lots of them, thousands of them, as the Romans were present there with legions, military occupation, grouped in legions. So these demons were living in this poor man. We hear him now asking through his voice, the demon speaking, not to be tormented. It's surprising because the man didn't ask to be saved, but not to be tormented. It's kind of an in-between state that is a bad compromise. Don't torment me. I beseech you, don't torment me. Don't come here. And the, the demons beg the Lord, beg the Lord to depart. Go. Not to throw them into abyss, he said. Then they said, okay, if you have to throw us away, put us in the pigs here. This is a lion that makes a spectacle, a frightening spectacle of demon-possessed people. And while we think about this, we could think about this as an exception. We don't see people like this in our days. I tell you that we do see people like this in our days. There are demon-possessed people there who do harm, not just to themselves, but to others in mass. I don't know what you think about the, 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 the leaders of the world these days, but some of them act completely in a demonic way, inflicting pain and suffering, committing crimes at large scales. And you know what I'm talking about. I grew up in Romania, and Bogdan is here, he can testify to this. During the communist years, crime was inflicted upon the people 
who are pro brought to, to extensive tools to forget everything who they were. I'll tell you about this a little bit later. A little bit later. But there's evil done in the world. And there's evil done by demon possessed to themselves. As we are told in another uh, version of this gospel, the, demoniacs were, the demoniac was cutting himself, isolating himself in the tombs away from society and being aggressive at times. The lion, the devil as the lion comes through people like this, with this be at high rank or even lost somewhere in a tiny, tiny city, being completely lost from the world with a reaction such as the one is described here today. This is the lion. The Holy Fathers here, the Holy Fathers, say that there's a spiritual understanding of this part that I called of the lion. It has to do with the passions that we, all of us, are drawn to, attracted by the devil, by the demon, by the enemy, and we give in to. St. Nicodemus of Mount Athos, just like a few other fathers before him, names put this in, in seven categories, others maybe in eight or more. We are like this man here when we are under the demon of pride. When we're under the demon of love for money, of sexual immorality, the demon of envy, the demon of gluttony, the demon of anger, the demon of despondency. I don't know if you associate with any of these, but they hit me all. See, Nikiforos was, Nicodemus was right. In just a few days, we'll celebrate the, the uh, uh, protection of the Theotokos, move to Ohi Day, and we hear about the great vision of St. Andrew, the fool for Christ, of the Virgin Mary in the church, Vlaherna, as they were praying, who, who was seen, the Virgin Theotokos, holding her veil and promised to protect those who honor her. The same St. Andrew, we hear about him being blessed by God, like many other holy men and women that we know of to this day, to have the discernment of seeing people and the demons they carry, these passions. And he will, tell, he will tell his disciple, watch out, there's a man who walked in now, do you see the demon of, um, of, of anger or um, um, of rich possessions? or sexual immorality. He was talking about these, and every now and then said, oh, phew, this man has so many of them. I don't know how he can possibly breathe. So it is. If we could see ourselves, we could recognize that we are in many ways tormented like this. That's why the Holy Father say, to see our own sins and passions is more difficult than to raise the dead. Did you hear that, how difficult it is? In the absence of that, how are we? Good. We're good. We're, we're in good shape. And this is what brings me to the second part here of the story, to the fleas, to the flea, or the COVID, the tiny, teeny, small one that people cannot see, but feel the effect. And what I like about the COVID is that it's transmissible. It goes quickly from one to another, and we get together as groups of sick people. The fleas have the nice property that they don't just go away in 10 days like COVID does. They will stay there for a long time. They will stay just like with the demons that we might carry. How do we get to, this, to the flea and the COVID here? Well, after the demons left the demoniac, they went to the pigs. The pigs could not withstand that huge, tremendous force. They went down to the lake and they sunk in there. A moment for us to pause. Pause. To thank God that he doesn't allow the demons that we host to do the same with us as they did with the pigs. That God is present. And he gives us a chance, as he did to the people from the village. They were not attacked by the lion, but they had a problem with the flea, the fleas. These people were informed that the pigs had drawn. They came quickly, saw that guy at the feet of Jesus, dressed in the right mind, 
They didn't pay attention to him. A soul saved. Instead, what they do? They worried about their things. The pigs. And the pigs were so important to them that Jesus was asked by them to leave. The people of the surrounding country of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got in the boat and returned. Here we have the great miracle. Here you have the Son of God, the Messiah, the power of all that's evil, including death, as we see later. And these men now, having the fear. The fear for what? The fear for change, brothers and sisters. The fear for change in the presence of the Holy One, of the Son of God. They look good. They ran businesses. Maybe they drove cars. Maybe they were dressed beautifully, unlike the man who was naked there. They were able to articulate themselves mentally. Maybe they were great orators, unlike me. But these people now, St. John Chrysostom tells us, were even more possessed by the demon than the one who showed it externally, screaming, breaking the chains, ripping off his clothes. These people that seem to be right, just like us, had the demon. The demon of being who they were. With their pigs. Such that when the Lord came to them, they refused that presence. Leave us alone. Leave us alone with our life. Leave us alone with our job, with our little house, with our little family, with our little sports, with our remote control, with our hobbies, with our pleasures, with our work. Sunday work, how about that? Just leave us alone. It's frightening. It's frightening. It brings fear to have you tell us to change. And the flea, or rather the COVID here, that infected them all, was so strong that without being of one mind, they were not organized on this thing, they all reacted and they said, depart from here. This is a marvelous thing and a difficult one to accept for us today in this event. This is not a parable. This is something that has clear, physical, touching presence in the community there and in ours as well. Allow me to take the lion and the flea or the COVID, the virus, to a different level. Get a little bit finer here. Because we could easily say we're not in this category. I'm good. And, you know, go on the, on the path of, of delusion, as I said, of thinking that what I do is right. I have my Jesus at home and I'm, I'm just saved. I'm under the tree. I go to whatever, my yaya was Greek and my father was from Romania, my grandfather was a priest, I'm, I'm good and I have a cousin in Mount Athos and we go with that. Forgive me, that will not go. What I want to tell you today is that there's only one option that is beside being attacked by the lion or infected by the virus. That option is to be at the feet of the Lord here, here, right here. Vested in the right mind. The lion, this is on top of the layer that the gospel brings to us. The lion as institutionalized, organized, demonic presence. This is what we see in this country in many instances. It's just not one individual. It's a whole bunch of them who at times are being led by organizations and what's worse, under the protection of the law. This is the layer that is many lions roaring to devour us. And I tell you, not to give in to these, not to associate with such ideology, not to support anything like this. Who in the right mind, allow me first to, to read you a couple of things here. St. Anthony the Great, a, an ascetic of the 4th century from the desert of Egypt. 
A time is coming, he said, 1600 years ago, a time is coming when men will go mad. And when they see someone who is not mad, they will attack him saying, you're mad. You are not like us. You are not like us. St. Evagrius of Pontus, one of the monastics from the, the Philo Philokalia that we, we read from. I'm sorry, forgive me. St. Andrew, the fool for Christ, the same one that I mentioned earlier. I feel that the time is coming. We read this in the class in the morning just a few days ago. St. Andrew now was talking to one of the demons in the presence of his disciple who, who wrote these things down. And the demon was casually approaching him and then got very angry telling to Andrew that he cannot, cannot swallow him. That Andrew is so repulsive to him that the, the, him, the demon hates Andrew because he cannot get close to him. And the demon now says, but you know what? Don't worry. Don't worry. Here's the reason why. I feel that the time is coming when my work will be finished. At that time, men will be worse than I, as children will be even more wicked than adults. Children will be more wicked than adults. Then I will rest, and I will not teach men anything anymore, since they themselves will carry out my will in everything. Now, you tell me about those children who go to school and they are fed ideology to change their identity at the age of six or seven or five. To go home and tell their parents that they decided to be somebody else. And that what they care, what they say, what they think, what they believe, is irrelevant because the school backs them up. And if you dare to say anything as a parent or as a therapist or as a doctor, you'll be taking your license or put in prison. The lion brought to law, institutionalized, roaring at us. Just an example. And our children. The lion roars through the voice of the people who claim that marriage is a different matter than what we know, the union, union between a man and a woman. It's written in law. The lion is there to devour us unless we go on the side of the lion. And I tell you, do not part with the lion. Institutionalized was the demonic act of the communist regime in Romania. I said, I will come back to this. The prisons that they, have, they had instituted were so demonic. If you read about what they were doing there, you probably puke. Yet there were many who went through them. So many died. The relics of these martyrs are now brought to churches to venerate because they did not give up their faith. Others, with courage, they moved on and they made it out of their sane, safe, after tremendous suffering. But the regime there was to bring them to renounce everything, starting with their parents, with their siblings, with their God, and themselves, not to be who God made them. A lot of sh blood was shed because of this, brothers and sisters. Something that we accomplish so easily these days with our young generations in school. To renounce all these things. Different institution, different times, the same purpose of the enemy who is roaring to devour us. Allow me to go to the flea now. Take the flea to another level. Well, while we all have our reasons for telling God not to trouble us, not to be with us. And the excuses we find not to be with Him. There are instances where we are with God, or at least we think we are with God. These are times when we think, we feel that we are good Orthodox Christians, and that we do not do these things, that we are clean, and that we are above the others. Here's a flea. And from the position we have as Orthodox Christians who participate in the beautiful divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom that is about 1,600 years old, and we admire the beautiful icons that our Holy Fathers transmit to us as the very theology of Christ on earth. 
We sit here, and even here, to condemn others in our hearts, that they are not like us, and that we are right. We sit here to condemn that demoniac was in the tombs. For whatever reason, he's cutting his whatever body off and isolated, and we took care of him, and we are good. We take care of the needy. We're also here to take good care of ministries and the times we forget to love God and to love one another. Another demon, another flea biting. We might be so obsessed with what we eat. The flea that comes to bite us with fasting and, and going by every bite we take. Or maybe the flea of <clears throat> building a beautiful church and raising money, having fundraisers, and going to have $10 million to do that, and all geared towards that. There is a very subtle movement of the enemy, not as the lion, but as the flea. And what's worse, as the virus, whom we get and we try to bring to others and build up some strength in the church. In the church and looking good, and doing the things that we should be doing, but in reality to be all demonic. The demon can take that, and it's all lost, no matter how many bricks we put on top of another, or how much we have in the savings account. This is such a dangerous thing, so dangerous that we cannot defend ourselves against, against it. The flea of the orthodox, invisible to others, but yet biting, destroying, and bringing death, the spiritual death. Let us be mindful of this. How can we be defensive? How can we defend ourselves? This is my last, the last part of my homily. What are we to do? Well, first of all, since we celebrate St. James today, the, the apostle, the brother of the Lord, his stepbrother, steprelative, his icon is right here, the first bishop of Jerusalem, we celebrate in the church, we should have celebrated today, the divine liturgy of St. James. That's how deep the, our liturgical roots run. It was simplified by St. Basil the Great and then by St. John Chrysostom to what we have today. St. James in the fourth chapter of his letter says, Submit to God. Submit to God. What I said earlier, what happened to, this, to, the, to the demoniac here, be at the feet of, of Jesus, Vested and in the right mind. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't get into the place where the devil operates. Resist it. Don't engage the people who are possessed and doing the work of the devil. Step out. Step out. Submit to God, not to them. No matter how sweet or how beautiful they'll be on the screen. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded having to do with that thin layer of the flea. Oh, we're doing, I'm, I'm great, I'm, but yet, on the other hand, the demon works through me. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Humble yourselves. This is one of the uh, admonitions today. How can we defend ourselves? Pursue humility. Let us learn from those who are humble, those who are holy, what humility is about. Those who have managed to find Jesus and be at his feet. What does it mean to be at the feet of Jesus? It means to worship him. And by this I mean not just Sunday service. I mean to be at the feet of the Lord, worshiping, offering gratitude, kissing. What does it mean to be vested? It means to have on the vestments of the baptism, not stained as we do day after day as we go in the world, but cleansed by the very process of the heart that repents and confesses in the sacrament of confession, the sins, to be forgiven, washed, cleansed, vested. What does it mean to be in the right mind? 
to be in the mind of the church. Because the church, as it lives, as a, as a living organism now for 2,000 years, as we read about in the gospel, in the letters in the New Testament, in the lives of the saints, how can we be in the right mind without knowing what the right mind of the church is, the thronima? The thronima. Therefore, we engage with these things. We engage with these things. But humility is one of the aspects that is brought here by, by St. James and by the, uh, the Holy Fathers here. Before humility, there are the things. The sign of the cross. The sign of the cross keeps the devil away. Prayer. The Jesus prayer. Practice consistently in our days, through our, through our week every day, with discipline and spontaneous, keeps the demons away. Keeps us in the right mind a little bit. Prayer of any kind, discipline prayer, from the prayer book, that is for us the Orthodox. Helps us with being at the feet of Jesus and turning to be cleansed vestments and to be in the right mind. And, of course, participation in the mysteries, the sacraments of the church, confession. I wish that all of us could confess before receiving Holy Communion. Just like the Russians do. Because that will benefit us greatly. The Holy Communion is not a neutral material that is given to us. It's a double-edged sword. When it's, when it's approached with fear of God, faith and reverence and preparation, and by preparation, preparation we, the Orthodox, mean confession of our sins some fasting before, being in the mind of the church, then it helps, brings life. But the other side of the sword can go in the opposite direction. And we pray for that not to happen. So we do this. So um, an example here that I want to tell you, a, a longer one, and this is the conclusion of my, my long homily today, from the life of St. Yakovos, a new saint of our church, Yakovos Tsalikis from Evia, this is a, an event or series of events reported here. This is life. Some parents one day took their daughter to the monastery, but she would not enter the church for the prayers. The daughter was demon-possessed. The lion, that is. The visible one. The elder came out of the church holding the skull of St. David when suddenly the demon-possessed girl yelled out. What happens at that monastery? St. David, or Siu David, had lived. He was an extraordinary man whom the devils fear to death. So now Saint Elder Yaakov was, when, when he saw the demon-possessed girl, ran to the church and came out to the relics of the Saint of Saint David, or Sir David, with a skull. And the girl started to yell out, Get lost! I do not want to hear you old man. And she was hitting herself violently. I am the ruler of this world, yelled the demon from the girl's mouth. I hold Athens in my hands. That Athens, the capital of Greece. I hold Athens in my hands. That which I desired has happened. I have cut the hair of the priests. Just like I have my hair cut now. Without long hair. He said, I cut the hair of the priests. I have the hands even on the priests, the demon, the demon said. I have been battling the monastery for many years. The great one is here, in here, protects you. I cannot trick you. Look at your legs. Your legs have become rotten. And in truth, the elder had, had bad veins in his legs and the circulation was bad. May you lose your determination and say that you are a saint and I will send you to hell. So now he's in danger too. Not just that girl who was demon possessed, the demon tempts him and says, you got to say that you're a saint. All it takes is that, and you'll be straight to hell. That's the flea for, for St. Yaakovos. And the Elder Yaakovos answered, I am not a saint for the Lord. I am not a saint for the Lord has said, you are to become a saint. <clears throat> you are to become a saint, not you're a saint. You are to become a saint. I do whatever I can do. I am simply a man made of the earth. 
With renewed indignation, the demon-possessed girl said, What shall I do with you, you goat of a priest? You're humble, and you have Christ within you, or else I would have obliterated you. I have given you so many sicknesses, and yet you persist in your battle with me. Brothers and sisters, this is our calling, to persist in the battle with the demon, with the demonic powers. And even if they are around us, even if they come to us by law, institutions, not to submit to these powers, but submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But also to have the courage to take off the shirt, the vestments, the clothing, and see, are we infected with the fleas? That subtle way of the devil to come to, to give us the great glorious quote-unquote fail by means of who we are called to be, not being that. And also to remember that we are children of God, brethren of this man, Jesus, in whose presence the demons were screaming, go away, go away, don't torment us. We are his brothers and sisters, the children of God. In the hymn of Saint Yaakovos today, he's called, among others, a brother of the Lord, for he has confidence. As children of God, we have confidence that nothing can touch us. As long as we work diligently, tirelessly, top priority, to be here at the feet of the Lord, vested with the clean vestments washed in the sacraments of confession, and in the right mind, the mind of the church. Amen. Please rise so we can finish the Divine Liturgy.